this is the internal review committee of the Rent Adjustment Commission. Uh, it's Thursday, July 28th at 12.30 p.m. We want to call the meeting to order and have a roll call, please. Commissioner Lucas? Here. Commissioner Pong? Here. There's two commissioners present in this corner. Great. Thank you so much. So, um, our normal chairperson is Carol Brogdon. She's not here today, so um, Jane Paul, I'll attempt to uh, do my best in her stead. So uh, we'll go to item number two, uh, and that's the proposed seismic retrofit regulation. We need a few more folks from staff to advise us, so we'll uh, hold off on that and go to item number three, which is public comment. We have public comment cards? Speaking we have not that? received any public comment cards. Okay. Well, in that case, I think we'll uh, check that <laughs> off. Uh, future IRC meetings, uh, we should uh, wait for Commissioner Brogdon to address those dates, but I guess you and I could look at them mm -hmm. and see what's I have, good. Um, I have them on my calendar in case we need, wait, do I? Yes. Um, on the, I'm on the wrong month, sorry. I have August 11th as, with a question mark for RAC. Is that still a possibility? Is there um, a possible special meeting or something? The, no, we will not have a special meeting on the 11th. It's going to be on August 25th. Okay. Okay. So then we do have a rack for sure on the 18th. Yes, so, uh, on the 4th, 18th, and 25th. So in terms of IRC, do we want to maybe hold the 11th and check with Commissioner Brogdon about it? What do you think? Um... 4th, 11th, 18th, 25th. I can't do four <laughs> Thursdays in a row. Okay. Um, so it will either have to be after RAC mm -hmm. on the 18th. For me, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe uh, that's just for me. Um, I think that's probably would be true for all of us. So I think we should say that the 11th is not good for IRC. That's and that fine. We'll hopefully, be able to do if we need another. Uh, if we need an IRC. We'll do it on the 18th potentially after RAC, and we'll check with Commissioner Brock. Okay, Off that's great. Right. And then we can get back. With you. Yeah, and we'll we'll see what happens after today's meeting for the need for additional meetings. Okay, that sounds fantastic. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> That concludes our meeting. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so we will take a five minute break and come back for item two. Thank you. We're off the record. Thank yeah. you. We're off the record. Thank you. We're back from our break and we'll call our meeting to order again. Um, now that everybody's here, so we will have a relatively informal meeting, but if uh, we could just do uh, the first time anyone speaks, say your name for the record. It would be wonderful. Um, and I guess, um, will you take us through this process and let us know what needs to be done? That would be wonderful. Please yes. go ahead. Uh, Daniel Gomez, uh, Director, Housing and Community Development, uh, Code Enforcement Division. Um, what you have before you is a uh, existing regulation for the Tenant Habitability Program. It's a 710, REC Regulation 710. What you also have before you is a proposal for REC Regulation 720, which is a modification of the tenant of 710 to allow a more expedited process for handling seismic retrofit cases, which are substantially similar to primary renovation. The, the, the main goal of 710 is to address primary renovation, which is a different type of improvement, mm -hmm. and seismic has come under a different set of regulations in the city. So we we found it was necessary to create the seismic regulations here. So we made them a subset of 710 and renumbered it as 720. In addition, there is a provision in law within that the council passed which allows you to modify the service and notice requirements. For example, there's a 60-day waiting period in the uh, primary renovation ordinance. That's eliminated within this. There's also other time provisions. 
So what staff has attempted to do here is make those modifications. But they are modifications of this existing regulation. And so what we have found on review is that although this is comprehensive for a fulfilling the seismic regulations, and it is based upon a modification of this, we found that both regulations fail to adequately address in a prescriptive way appeals, which this is a new item for you. I was hoping that you'd ask those questions. <laughs> so um, what we're recommending is discussion here, and if you have any questions, but I'll walk you through this first. Um, you have an authority clause here under um, seven. Pardon me, Mr. Gomez. Could you just, uh, just one quick question before you take us through, which is fantastic. I appreciate it. What, what's the process for this becoming part of the ordinance? Uh, this, you have lawmaking authority under the, si under the um, modifications to the LAMC that the seismic retrofit ordinances have, have created. So you have authority to modify the time provisions of the primary renovation ordinance. So after RAC, though, does it have to go to the committee or to council? No, this is entirely for you okay, to thanks. decide. Okay. In, in that same vein, I guess this is where I'll ask my, this question, is do we have direction from council on what yes. they want this to be? Or like what our, what our direction from above is? Like yes, do, because so this was passed as an ordinance, um, I don't have the seismic ordinance with me, unfortunately. Um, could you get a copy of that for future discussion, please? Um, by ordinance, they gave, council gave you authority to modify the time provisions for to carry out seismic retrofit work. If you made a finding that your regulation was necessary to efficiently carry out the mandatory earthquake hazard reduction requirements of Division 93 and 95 of Article 1, Chapter 9 of the LAMC. So the council passed an ordinance giving you the authority by regulation to modify the notice and service requirements if you made that one finding. So the council desires that you do so by enacting that. Um, in conversation with the mayor's office also, uh, they, are, uh, they have expressed that it is their interest to allow the owners of soft story buildings to um, have an expeditious process to go through. For example, there's a 60-day waiting period within the existing primary renovation ordinance. Within the seismic modification, should you choose to adopt it, that goes away. Thank you. So our task is, are the time provisions specifically, not any other? The time provisions, as well as the overall rule. It comes down to, do okay. you like it? Do you understand it? Does the public understand it? Will the public understand it? Is it using natural language, plain language, or is it too full of legalese, for example? It becomes a guiding document for the public. So where, what I had intended to do was to walk you through this and show the strong parts, the strength of it, and then Subsequent to our last meeting on this, staff has discovered, um, I'll call them gaps, uh, or uh, we need to address appeals more uh, thoroughly. Because as it is, it's, there loop, there's an owner appeal and a tenant appeal, and under the present regulation, they're linked together. And in fact, under the law, they're linked together. So you have the authority by regulation to separate those, to show that um, this is much more May I? Uh, oh, please, so whatever you need to do. Sing, dance. <laughs> okay, I do all of the above. Oh, this is helpful actually because I didn't bring my glasses. <laughs> you took that away. We, uh, <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> okay, so as it is now, um, you have work that's intended. Seismic work. We call it seismic retrofit. They submit their plans to building and safety, and then in that process, they enter into a THP review because the building is presumably occupied. In that review, 
there is discussion, discussion with the uh, owner, the contractor, and the tenants as well. That ends up, if the owner, if there's owner agreement, tenant agreement, things go well. But let's say, no. We'll strike the tenant out. If the owner and the department can't agree to a tenant habitability plan, the owner has the right to a 15-day appeal to file an appeal within 15 days. Within One, 15 days of the denial of the, yes, of the plan? Yes, which is what your regulation intends to stipulate, because as it is now, the code doesn't get that detailed. Mm. So then, once there's agreement, then the, uh, the plan gets served to the tenants. Then the tenants have a decision point. If they weren't involved up here, and maybe not all the tenants participated, the tenants have a decision, decision point. Appeal, yes or no. They have 15 days in which, from the time they were served, in which to file an appeal. So what we intend to do in a revision of this is roadmap it more clearly. As it is today, the tenant and owner's right of appeal is described in the law and in the present regulation. It's described jointly. It's together. It says essentially, owners can appeal, tenants can appeal. So the wind and how becomes foggy. So what staff intends to do is, is roadmap this more clearly, that there are steps one, two, three, four, five, etc., by suggesting a revision to this document first, the one you have before you. revise this further in the document to address appeals in an ABC roadmap fashion so that all involved know what to do. It sufficiently addresses definitions and uh, seismic work and your finding here that you must make and uh, all of that up to a point works but on further review and internal discussion we found that you know we need to roadmap this appeal process better. Now, this was based on your predecessor's adaptation, the rule. So will this new, will, will 720 replace 710, or will it, it's, it's just in addition it's to supplemental, it's in addition to it. It's in addition to it. So that's phase one, is when staff presents this to you again as soon as possible with the appeal roadmap, mm -hmm. we would hope that you convene again, consider it as the IRC, and then move it forward in accordance with your process. Then in phase two, we intend to come back with a revision of this document so that the two are consistent in how they discuss this. So that 710 will be consistent with the Specifically, appeals provisions, etc. Correctly, correct. Yes. Um, so, I think you started earlier to kind of go through. To go through. It. Yes. Is this a good time for that, yeah, or it's fine? Do we that would need be great. more overview? Okay, I'll walk through it. Um, go ahead. Yes. Yes. So I just have a quick question, but I also want to say it's great to be making this more clear. And it's just a great idea to have, a, as you say, a roadmap. Um, but the original one, so the 710 section, um, has a section, Appeals of the Department's Determination. It says landlords and tenants. And this just has tenants in it, unless I'm not seeing where the land landlord is. They're not consistent with each other at this point. Okay. All right. All right. So yeah, if you take us through it, that would be fantastic. Okay. Okay. We'll have to get the ordinance revision one eight three. 
Also, um, Mr. Gomez, um, uh, this, uh, I see we have this soft story spreadsheet, but this is soft story and other buildings as well, right? Yes. So there's the, because there are other kinds of buildings that need the site. There are non-ductile concrete buildings. Uh, they're included within this as seismic okay. retrofit work. Thank you. Uh, but the main topic today are these buildings, the soft story, because they are getting the orders before the non-ductile concrete. And there's more urgency in those because of the safety considerations? There's more of them. Oh, there's more of them. More soft story buildings. There's very few non-ductile. I see. Thank there's uh, twelve to 13,000 soft story buildings. Oh, And the non-ductile aren't fully accounted for yet. Thank you very much. Okay, we ready? All right. So where we start off is under 721, the purpose. Uh, it's pretty clearly stated. Any questions about that? Okay, we move to the authority. This is critical. In authority, you have to make a finding. And you really, these are suggested words for you. This, you are the Rent Adjustment Commission, so if you feel this is an expression that it, that number one and number two are expressions that you would make as a rent adjustment commission, well, that's for you to consider. However, number three is a necessary finding in order to change the definitions that restrict time or provide for time. It's a necessary code finding that you find it's necessary to make this regulation that changes the time provisions to allow the seismic retrofit work to be carried out efficiently. So reading number one is, is that uh, something that the Rent Adjustment Commission would agree to? We're writing on your behalf. What, which is wonderful. So um, I just wonder in terms of going through this, um, Shall we go through all of it, and then obviously we would want to give more than a moment's thought. A lot, some things are very obvious, it's time safety, but then other things might require more thought. We might want to confer with the other IRC commissioner. So, would we? You're not going to adopt. Staff has not recommended you adopt anything here today. Right, right. So what I'm wondering is, can if you go through and tell us kind of what. Is most okay. important that okay. does that make sense? Okay. So we'll That's know fine. how to focus our <coughs> absolutely. Um, number one and two are expressions that staff recommends that they do in fact uh, uh, express your your concerns. Staff is advising you that number three is a necessary finding. Uh, <coughs> under definitions, there's a critical change here. It says in the lead-in sentence, words and phrases not defined here shall be defined by the department. The department needs additional flexibility and authority to do so. So some very specific words are defined here, but we will look elsewhere for other terms. Things may pop up that we need to define, and we'll look elsewhere in the law for definitions or even to the dictionary. So, mm -hmm. so we find that's a necessary change. There are definitions here that relate to seismic uh, retrofit work and uh, related work. They're pretty typical definitions. Then we get into 723, the procedure for undertaking seismic retrofit work. This is where the roadmap has to begin. So it starts off, okay. It starts off identifi identification of seismic retrofit work. We need to clear permits, that's pretty typical. Um, we have an understanding with the building department on how we will clear permits. In fact, we have public counter space now in the building department next to the, so the seismic plan check, and we will have two full-time staff there uh, for nothing but seismic tenant habitability program review. And that's consistent with what the mayor wants. So the department will go through clearance here. It's typical clearance, it's review, discussion. Then it's the standard under 
It's a typical language about forms. And it's uh, the typical expressions about what we will do, the identification of the responsible parties, the affected tenants, the scope of work. Uh, staff will be able to turn to a plan check engineer and ask, is there any work going on in the interior of the units? And there may or may not be. In soft story, there will not be typically work going on in a unit. It's typically in the garage areas. If you get to non-ductile concrete, there is a strong chance of work going on inside of the units. Thank you. So moving on in 723.03.2, notification of deficiencies. If we receive a plan and it doesn't have address the concerns and safety of the tenant, then staff's going to notify the owner. This is Where the, are we? I'm sorry, I just got Okay, lost. it's uh, page 6 of 15, oh. and it's the first subsection, 723.03.2. Okay. So the THP staff would notify the owner of any deficiencies in, in the plan. Yeah, you need to address this. You need to control odor, dust, and noise. You need to. Um, you haven't addressed uh, how you're going to relocate uh, temporary parking while you work in this parking area. So that's addressed there. Now we get to where we have to flesh things out. Appeals of the department determination. This is where we are recommending further development of this document is from this point forward. And what we intend to do is to come back to you when you convene, reconvene as the IRC and have a document and present it to you before you convene and discuss that point on. So here's what we find is that Landlords and tenants may appeal the department's determination regarding a tenant habitability plan to a hearing officer. The appeal shall be made in writing upon appropriate forms provided by the department and shall specify the grounds for appeal. The appeal shall be filed within 15 calendar days of the service of the department's determination, and etc. It goes on. In the next paragraph, appeal shall be accompanied by the payment of an administrative fee of $35, and it then expresses other things. And then the requested hearing shall be held within 30 calendar days of filing the appeal following the procedures set forth in LAMC 151.07A.3. Uh, this needs to be roadmap. That's what I meant earlier, is you have a plan submittal. At this point, it would be the landlord who would be appealing. It might be a tenant if the tenant's participating in the development of the THP. So we need to more clearly state here what the owner must do for an appeal and the steps to take and the type of form to use. Then we would go on to, we want to move commencement of seismic retrofit work. This, this submittal is following the original draft, okay, the original 710. It doesn't make sense to go to start of work at this point because the tenants haven't been served yet. So what we intend to do is reorganize this. So commencement of work will be moved to later after all of these appeal things have been exhausted. Ooh, that makes sense to me. When I was reading through it, that's yeah, that was where I, later on I was getting confused. View, like just reading through it when I get to the later part and I said, wouldn't that be? Now, but there's something to keep in mind as we review these is the code would, that this is all founded upon was passed with urgency. It's, a, it's essentially this abbreviated. Right. Right. Hence, the authority to make regulations. Question? Any questions? Yeah, no, I, so I, my question was, are we actually moving this chunk of text? so yes. that it makes sense in the ordering of the document. Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're moving it and we're revising it. Okay. And then before we go on to the uh, uh, other sections while we're here, um, it, a tenant can be involved in the process of 
drafting the THP? Yes. Okay. Tell me about that. Okay. Know. In practice, um, it's encouraged in the plain language of the law that um, owners reach out to tenants and uh, discover their issues and concerns and have a discussion. Our staff doing this work encourages the owners to do it and contractors to do that. So a tenant can be involved. So then they have early awareness. Uh, this work, let's say, if it does get inside a unit, there are issues like, well, I work from home or mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Or I'm a sound engineer. I, I do, I, you know, with electronics today, I produce records or uh, CDs. <laughs> mm -hmm. In, in home, so I can't live like this. So you discover all those issues and concerns and hopefully they can work it out. Mm -hmm. Not everything is worked out. And there's not every, uh, an owner doesn't have an obligation to fulfill every issue and concern. For example, if they work at home, um, that might be appealed, but the issue is, is it untenantable? So there, we might envision a scenario where the, the THP gets submitted and that submission is not actually signed off True. by a tenant. Is that, is that what we're A tenant might not agree with it and would appeal it. Okay. Yeah, if the tenant doesn't agree and at that point the owner agrees, then they could give it to the, uh, the tenant and then the tenant who's participating has received it. So that's one point of stipulating more, going into more detail uh, about the appeals, like when's notice and knowledge, when is it appealable? So we want to structure within this, this is the moment of appeal. Because just because you're sitting there in a discussion, does that necessarily trigger the ability to appeal? It's arguable. So we want to nail it down in the document. So commencement of, so this should go into the owner's appeal, because the owner has the first right of appeal if they can't come to an agreement on a THP. And then it gets served to the tenant. So the next thing should be service. And then the next should be the tenant review it. And then the tenant's right of appeal. And then the steps for the tenant to appeal. That doesn't exist in either document. They're just both gathered under the heading you just looked at. So it's prudent that we redo this from this point, the point I pointed out. The seven. The new, yes. the, new, the new regulation. As phase one, and then in phase two, come back and make this reg consistent with that. Mm -hmm. So we move on to the notice and service requirements. Um, oh, it's, okay, it's okay before you just, do we want uh, one other item? This is Matthew Holland with the Compliance Division. Before we skip to the next page, we just wanted to, one other item of concern on 723.04, commencement of seismic retrofit work. Um, which I know is going to be moved later on, but we just wanted to um, uh, also be an item of concern as we move on and make changes is the, uh, the requirement in the first sentence that uh, work may commence only after a 15 day period has elapsed. Right now, um, under the normal um, tenant habitability plan process, the, the date is 60 days. But because seismic is considered an urgent matter of, of importance, that the time limit can be moved up uh, by regulation. Uh, the suggestion here is 15 days. But we also have to keep in mind that um, the appeal period is also 15 days. Right. And those being the same day could be a potential, potential issue because if the uh, owner says, I'm going to start work 15 days from now and tells the tenants, the tenants receive that notice and they decide on the 15 day deadline they're going to appeal, just processing Operations. times and things might create an issue that, that they've already started work. Appeal and the, tenants, the same day as construction. Begins. Yeah, so we want to, to, um, to make sure that that item is, is, is covered in, in the final version. Mm. So this will be structured differently. What you have before you is a standard LAMC uh, appeal provision and it's typically incumbent upon the applicant to discover these things before they move forward. Typical of a zone variance or conditional use or anything like that. But this is, staff agrees. We're in agreement that this needs to be uh, structured to avoid a start of work. Also commencement of work. When you read standard construction contracts, it's the contract that commences and it's work that starts. We want to use more natural language and say something like start of work, which people understand. And, uh, but that'll be up to you.
Okay. So that language needs to be refined. So refi like refined meaning there'll be a longer period? There'll be, there'll be language that has more of a, uh, it may result in a longer period, but it'll have validations so that work doesn't start if an appeal has been filed. It, it could be simply assuring that work may not start until a 20 day or 25 or 30 day. And staff will consider different options and present them to you. Monitoring. Monitoring should come after everything has been resolved and work has started. So monitoring is an in-progress function. So after all of the administrative or administerial things have happened and everyone has fulfilled their responsibility and work has begun, it just doesn't make sense to have monitoring here and then go into service and notice requirements. Monitoring is a function after work starts. Uh, again, this is following the ordinance and the existing rule. So, so it's like clean. this in the old one, even though it doesn't make sense. Yes. So this will sound familiar to us when we come back in phase two. Yes. Okay, so this would be moved again to later. Yes. Okay, thank you. And then within notice and service requirements, those will be distributed out throughout the document to each appropriate part. Might be consolidated, for example, on the owner's appeal. You may find statements there that describe service to the tenants. This is just pretty much just, it's not organized in a logical way. Now we get to time frame. Start and completion dates. If you take a moment to read that. It's pretty typical. We'll set that in the appropriate place. Description of work and impact. Again, that'll put, be put in the appropriate place. So that this is a, a clear menu of what happens. And will these notices be taken from their tenant habitability plan? They, the Some will. Let's talk about that. The critical thing that we're trying to do here is let's look at the original 710 and go into definitions and go to the definition under 712 Notice of primary renovation work. This is what you're really modifying. This is the core of what you're doing, because by definition, the notice here provides 60 days prior to the commencement of any primary renovation work. If this was left standing and an owner received an order to do seismic work, or let's, let's even say there's no order. Seismic retrofit work is mandated. We don't want a 60-day waiting period. The longer there's a 60, the, that's exposure for the tenants. Because remember, as I said last time, these buildings are subject to this because they're unsafe. They're not unsafe, they're, they're identified as unsafe, hence the ordinance. That's why the retrofit's provided. And keep in mind, the, the core reason for expediting this is, is also this. If you read the seismic retrofit ordinance, it states the owner shall provide either plans to retrofit the building or demolish it. Now that's a whole other argument that the city of Los Angeles has not gotten into. 
it's a choice. Now you can imagine on, with 12,000, mm -hmm. approximately 12,000 soft story buildings, well, what if someone made the choice of demolition on a whole block? It's plain language there. So that is a public policy issue. It's a debate that will happen further down the road. So what we're trying to do here is expedite retrofit work and by doing that, Encourage a choice of retrofit. Encourage retrofitting. Well, encourage as retrofitting. As opposed to demolition. Yes. Yeah. So there are legal arguments that might surround this. Certain buildings, so it can't be demolished, and then you'll have well the seismic ordinance versus the the protective ordinances that you can't demolish. So there's a legal argument that will ensue there in the future, perhaps. But when we're talking about the notice that's going to be given to the tenants, I, or the notice is not. Um, in 72401.2, the proposed ordinance. Yes. Um, <clears throat> it's going to it's going to provide the notice will provide a description of the site se seismic retrofit work and any related work to be performed. And what what I'm wondering is that'll just be pulled from the THP or that'll be something that will have to separately be they'll be approved a, by the department or there'll be a prepared notice by the department that will have all the elements and then the in the THP process the plan itself as you alluded to it will state you have to serve this notice to the tenants so the comparison that I was about to go to was the key difference here is notice of primary renovation work and notice of seismic retrofit work there is no defined time in it we want to be able to define the time by the tenant habitability plan itself. And while we're comparing the two, um, can you tell me uh, what the what the department's position is, or how we've got to this point of wanting to have two separate um, regulations and not just amend seven ten with a okay. new like just do what we had to do here there's some, some new words two, two reasons that, that come to mind first staff tried to incorporate it into this it became a nightmare um, we couldn't effectively incorporate it into this then at the same time the other reason is that by ordinance the city council separated the cost recovery for primary renovation work from soft story, I mean, of seismic retrofit work. So they separated it by ordinance. So now when the department handles cases, they handle primary renovation cases separately from seismic retrofit cases. Hence, we made the business decision of having a seismic retrofit rule, which is a roadmap. But we recognize the relationship. That just sort of it's cleaner this way, having two separate things. It's. I mean, I mean in, I, I'm, yes. You know what I mean? Like in our heads, if we can separate the two, who's coming before us for seismic retrofit, who's coming before us for it's cleaner. renovation. That can, yeah. It's much clearer, easier to follow. For example, there's a whole public of uh, soft. There's a code mandate to retrofit, so we expect an onslaught of people coming forward. So it's just a lot cleaner to have here's the rule book for this rather than have the public go, what's primary renovation work? I'm, I'm a contractor, This I'm doing retrofit. Then we'd have to lead them through the document and say, oh, oh, we'll go to this page, we'll go to this subsection. If we just believe it's cleanly doing this, it's, here's your industry, here's your rule book. Do we, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no. Do we anticipate any overlap that while, okay, that the landlord will come through and say, well, since I'm doing the seismic retrofit work, let's go ahead and do this other primary renovation work. I see a head nod over here. Oh, okay. Well, that was actually going to be my question as well, because number two in the new document uh, says the notice will include a description of any other work that will be undertaken. Yes. So you're there getting simulated. I'd like to introduce that and then turn it over to Cynthia <laughs> Landis. Uh, yes, we anticipate that potential and for reasons that uh, Cynthia can hopefully explain. Uh, we have to separate things. Okay, Cynthia Landis, I'm with the uh, Rent Adjustment Section, formerly called Case Analysis. 
And what happens, like with the seismic retrofit work, it's specifically geared to, uh, I think it's uh, chapter 93 or whatever you call it in the code. Yeah. And other types of seismic work under a different portion of the code. And those are handled under primary renovation. And the whole allowance for the, for the cost recovery is different. There's a 10% cap on the rent for primary renovation. There's a $38 temporary rent surcharge under the seismic retrofit work, which is one of the reasons we bifurcated the process. And we're going to, I'm also going to be doing seismic uh, retrofit work regulations for um, the cost recovery aspect of it after I see how Dan's regulations go. I need to get his done first so I can proceed from there. Um, but it's two different processes in terms of how we handle the cost recovery. So he needs to have, from my perspective, separate uh, documentation that I can utilize in the cost recovery portion of it. Uh, just thinking out loud, it also, so I've heard the word appeal a lot today. <laughs> and, I, I, and when I hear the word appeal, I think of agenda. I mean, like our workload is going to essentially be <laughs> Uh, a lot. So that if we have these appeals from the seismic retrofit come forward, if it's separate, it's clearer what the issues for on appeal are, and therefore easier for the appeals for us to understand. What right. We're we don't about. get in the weeds talking about some primary renovation of the pool, mm -hmm. and right. it has nothing to do with the seismic retrofit appeal that would be before us. That doesn't require a response, that's just me thinking out loud. Good afternoon, Roya Babasada, I'm Director of Compliance Division. Hi, Ryan. Uh, I didn't intend uh, to get into appeal this time based on discussion I had with uh, Mr. Gomez and uh, that we are going to explore appeal part that we developed in the next meeting so the focus would be other changes this time. but. To address your concern about uh, appeal, the appeal for THP, whether it's primary renovation or seismic work, is limited to general managers hearing. None of those are going to be subject to appeal by your body, uh, by appeal board here. So there is only one appeal applies to the and that's THP. only to the and that's only to a general manager's hearing. Yes. And then, nothing. And then. That's the final administrative decision after the decision is made by the hearing officer. Based on that determination, either work can be commenced or changes that hearing officer requires are going to take place. But only one appeal applies to THP. So the appeal will not come at all to the RAC? At no seismic retrofit appeal will come to RAC? No. Has that always been the plan? Because I feel like I've heard different. Yeah. The, the agency of the THP to uh, that work cannot commence uh, until the THP is completed and the work is on stay until the appeal is completed. It's uh, I guess uh, was it the reason that uh, only one appeal uh, was built into the process to complete and start the work after that. Uh, none of the THP, uh, the appeal board never heard any THP appeals. And I would assume that's because we don't want the retrofits to be delayed, 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 delayed. And right. that so also, yes, that. as seismic and any other primary renovation work is. Okay. Okay. That is news. That is, why <laughs> news to it? Yeah. yeah, thank you. The code states appeal to a hearing officer. Okay. Shall we continue? Yes, let's go back to where we were. Thank you. We got off on a Okay. Thing. So the big the big change that you're you're making here is by eliminating you're eliminating all references to time with the exception of the right to appeal. That will be decided by staff and presented to you and then decided by you on whether you want, uh, on the time that you want for appeal, just to, s to state it with clarity. So this 60 days by definition of primary renovation work this versus the definition of uh, notice of seismic retrofit work, there's no reference to time in that. And that's, that's the, the clearest 
that that's the biggest change here that you're doing. You may find other changes in, in the future for the typical primary renovation work, but that'll be phase two that we bring to you. We were on 72401.2, right? That's where we were. Description of work and impact? Yeah, that's where we're talking. That's where we left off, right? Yeah. So a, a, a typical plan will we'll do this. The notice of seismic uh, retrofit work will include that. The next section goes on into uh, whether it will, uh, the work will require a temporary change in, uh, for paying rent. Um, sometimes that's affected. That's something that's addressed typically. There may be situations where there is temporary relocation required, and that's on page 8 of 15, 724.01.4. Examples of that are, in, in one case, uh, uh, many of these buildings are, it's discovered they're dilapidated because of moisture intrusion, and the contractor or engineer makes an exposure and finds that there's a lot of decay in the structural members. So in one case, we had to have the building supported by shoring. So while the shoring is going into place, the tenants were temporarily relocated, and then they immediately moved back in. Um, or there's a particular construction activity where the owner might have to uh, shift, transfer a load. Many of these buildings have slender poles, and they're the vertical load-bearing elements, and if the design calls for replacement of those, they may say, okay, everyone go to the movies or something, and uh, that's another form of temporary relocation. Or in some cases, there may be longer temporary relocation. So the plan address, the document addresses temporary relocation in the same way that the primary renovation does. So there's really not going to be many changes in that. Do we have any idea of, of how likely that is going, the likelihood of this happening? We have an idea about 12,000 buildings in the city being subject to the seismic retrofit. Do we have an idea about how many tenants will be displaced potentially by this? Or in early calculation, they, there weren't enough buildings uh, done to come up with a statistic. But if you use, we have one instance where the tenants wanted relocation because they didn't like the noise. And they appealed to the hearing officer and the hearing officer denied their appeal. Um, at this time, there haven't been enough cases. Uh, soft story, primarily on the exterior, no work on the interior, is not likely to displace tenants. It's only an extreme case where the building has a lot of dilapidation based on water. As I explained in our first meeting, there's exterior plaster or stucco, and there's a glue lamb beam. Are you familiar with the... Uh, the look of the tuck under parking? The look, yes. I was, I the look. You were okay. okay. I thought I was afraid you were going to say, are you so with the glue you, the, <laughs> you the look of it. Well, these desks are a good model. The, your car is parking under here, and then this is a glue lamp beam, and there's exterior stucco on it, and it curls under. Uh -huh. Condensation occurs, mm -hmm. and there's no what's called weep screed for the water to drain out on this older construction. So the water accumulates and the glue laminated beam delaminates. That's been discovered in several cases because of the year of construction. That's a typical condition. It doesn't always occur. It's, it's hit and miss. So we have no prediction on it. But because the THP staff is familiar with the structure, we'll be at building and safety with the structural engineers and the applicant will be alert to it. And can address the TA, the THP can address it. Thank you. Because the structural engineer will address it on their first investigation, or the contractor will return to plan check for a detail change, where they will meet our staff and say, oh, detail change, THP change, in a perfect scenario. Um, so reading this section about the relocation makes me think, I don't... I, uh, unfortunately, don't remember the details of relocation for non-seismic retrofit. So I'm a little curious about kind of how these um, 
how these agreements happen, the landlord and tenant may mutually agree uh, about providing a per diem uh, to the tenant uh, for, for relocation. And I just wonder about what kind of how, what the oversight is for that. But it also takes me back to Roya's statement where I wonder, the appeal that there can only be one appeal to the general manager, is that for landlord and tenant? Uh, no, it might be different appeal. Uh, once the department make the determination on the THP, mm -hmm. whether accept it, deny it, or modify it, uh, and they uh, inform property owner about uh, that determination, property owner uh, can appeal the department's decision on the THP. And uh, at that time, we conduct a hearing within 30 days, and uh, the result of the hearing is uh, the decision of the department uh, for THP. And uh, if, let's say, the THP is uh, stand, and then a property owner submits a copy of uh, summary of the THP along with other documentation and application for the appeal to the tenants. Once tenants are served with this package, they can appeal. And for example, if there is no relocation provision and tenants believe that they're entitled to it, they can appeal. This can be two different appeals. There are times that Tenants are involved, property owners may involve tenants uh, from very beginning uh, because of the extent of the work and they want to uh, reduce the time of the review. So some of the tenants may be get involved with the process at the very beginning uh, during the development of the THP. And if the THP is a, uh, approved or denied and uh, they are informed of it, that's serving of the tenants that mm -hmm. also can be the time that tenants can appeal along with the landlord. So uh, as of majority of the cases that we see, these are two different appeals at two different times because uh, most of the cases, tenants are not involved at the very beginning of the work. Right, so when the tenant is served, then what we're looking at is 15 days for the tenant to appeal yes. if they don't like the tenant habitability plan. And is that the one appeal to the general manager that you referred to earlier? Yes, that is one time that they can appeal. But that doesn't limit the right if, let's say, they appeal and they don't uh, get what they uh, wanted to. Right. For example, they believe the extent of the work uh, requires uh, relocation, but hearing officer decides uh, that there is no need based on the scope of work that was submitted. That's, that is a hypothetical example. And when the work starts, if the work is extended beyond the scope of the uh, THV and tenants are not uh, in the habitable environment, mm -hmm. they can complain to the department. Department uh, investigated and potentially uh, issues a work, uh, stop work order. And then also at that time, there is potential for amendment of the THV uh, to include additional work, and again, they can appeal that. So it might go beyond one appeal, depends on the circumstances. Thank you. Any more questions? So I think we had you. <laughs> um, actually, I do have a question. Did we, did we determine how long this meeting is going to be? I think we said 7 o'clock tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Who's right. making dinner? <laughs> I'm ready for 7. 2 o'clock? Two. Two. Okay. Um, no, I just wanted to ch a time check because it, we have so many questions, Dan. We uh, keep interrupting you. But well, time is flowing. I didn't realize it was on that. Yeah. Thank you. Quite right. It, essentially, reorganizing this so that it's ABC or 1, 2, 3. Mm -hmm. So that it's a natural progression in what happens in the way it's reviewed, appealed, um, it, and then perhaps appealed again, and then monitored uh, with a, a work start and uh, keeping it sensible. These other items in here, when it goes on to delay and in initiating seismic retrofit work and um, maintenance of tenancy, staff is involved in that. We get called back to these jobs. Uh, we're monitoring them. Tenants call and say, hey, they're violating the terms of the plan. Mm -hmm. um, we're invoking within the tenant habitability plan several 
other code sections, such as Division 33 of the Building Code governs worksite conditions, keep the site clean. We're using the fire code for if welding is occurring, they need a fire watch, they welding or other hot work. Uh, it's, we're trying to make the site safe at the same time we're doing this. Most of the disputes come about because of uh, the uh, disruption to parking. And that's something that uh, we in our uh, rent section need to resolve is parking. We're working with the mayor's office to come up with methods of providing on-street parking that waive certain requirements like street cleaning or no parking. Um, it's, 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 it's a work that's under review. Uh, we've suggested the transportation department, department DOT has suggested, you know, permits for those buildings. Uh, nothing has happened yet, but it's all under discussion. At the time we're discussing this, there's also the seismic implementation team meetings with the mayor's staff. We're building in safety, and we and uh, compliance. Uh, I mean, rent come together to discuss the operations. So this is an important part of that, where I have to report back your involvement to the mayor's staff as well. So this is a critical high-level public policy issue and your involvement is very, very important. What's the big picture in terms of timing that every all these pieces fall into place? Because you obviously can't start work until you know where everyone's going to park, otherwise you'll have, you know, crisis in Los Angeles, a parking crisis in Los Angeles, yeah. et cetera, plus obviously our work and the mayor's work and your work. Is there a big we, This is one of those things where it is yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, That's not surprising. There, there's been, um, we're processing cases, and so the construction industry has learned how to navigate this thus far, and there's been very little uh, De very few cases where there's a delay. Um, but when the orders start coming about for more properties, we expect the workload to increase uh, annually. And that's why we need this in place, so that we have flexibility. Uh, flexibility is this. Um, staff interviews the uh, contractor and the owner, and then staff decides, well, here's when you can start work, based on what you've told me thus far. We need to be in that position because every case is different. Uh, if we have to wait 60 days, then we lose that strategic flexibility, the ability to do that. Or if more cases come forward and orders are coming due, then 60 days is a, is a problem. Something we have, which we want to get to this for phase two, is um, we write orders, it's just going into the part two, getting to the original, is our orders require 30 days to repair. You have to wait 60, so we have a conflict mm -hmm. between this, and so we want to resolve that as well. So, so this is cleanup. A lot of the work that was done here was done with urgency, and now we are here picking it up and moving it forward. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, is there anything else you want to draw our attention to, Dan? That is that where you see tricky things well, or things in conflict that we should be paying particular attention to? Everything else is covered and has okay. been covered in the under the umbrella of primary renovation and should work for seismic retrofits. So we're confident in that. The only thing that, that remains here for staff to do and then for you to do when you reconvene as the uh, internal review committee is decide whether you like what we present to you and whether it's in a sensible order that's practical and in plain language for the public. And we'd like, we intend to do so as quickly as possible. In fact, there's already drafts uh, here that uh, we're, we're not ready to present, but we're ready to reorganize those within the structure and uh, get them to you as soon as quickly. And uh, Ms. Gosden, then I believe, will be contacting you and we'll schedule a meeting sooner than you might expect. <laughs> okay, and so that those new drafts will have 
the staff recommendations on the timing, which yes. seems the most critical. Yes. Okay. And I intend, there's a lot going on, but I think the first way to look at it is in an outline table of contents so you can go, okay, that works. You know, notice, review, appeal, notify tenants, etc. And then after going over the table of contents or outline of the matter, then get into the uh, guts of it. That will allow us to proceed more quickly through this. Okay. Well, seeing as we're going to come back to this, then I, I think I, have some, I had some other substantive questions, but maybe we'll wait to see if any of it's cleared up with the new. Oh, we're ready now, though. Well, we maybe before, yeah, so they don't send us something that maybe our questions will address. That. Well, it's. It, yeah, especially substantive. Well, I, I, well, he, well, here's the thing is that they're substantive to me when I'm reading through this, okay. just sort of as a lay person. I don't know if this is within the jurisdiction of the RAC. I don't know if it's within the jurisdiction of the IRC. Because it sounds like we're doing, like a lot of the focus has been on 15 days versus 30 days versus 60 days and organization of this. Like it doesn't seem like we're being invited to comment on other sub like the actual substance mm -hmm. of the Oh, I'll restate that. Okay. You may comment on anything you like. Well, I can comment, fact, yeah. but I don't I, know if they'll do it. I don't know if it means anything. Staff, the staff is expressing staff's uh, concerns here and what we find operationally. You, your questions, we await them. Oh, that okay. Well, we can, let's throw one out there and we'll see. Yeah. You're like, that's none of your business, Sam. So we can go there. It, it works fine for us. Go for it, Sam. Um, Like, uh, let's just go to seven, on the new, on the proposed regulation, 726.08, and I think, yeah, we're 15 minutes away from a journey, so a little bit of time. On uh, moving costs, the landlord shall pay actual reasonable costs of moving the tenant, da, 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 da. Um, it, so once, I'm, I'm picturing a scenario where construction begins, and um, the tenant is still um, in their unit, um, and the landlord has gone um, past their THP provisions, whatever was approved by them, and what other remedies does the tenant have at that point um, to enforce what was approved and to then maybe get some more There's costs for them to move. They're like, well, I didn't want to move, but now I want to move. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, well, moving costs would come after there's a decision that things have to be moved, or this is moving to replacement housing. Uh -huh. Is that correct? It so, is. Right. That section is so what replacement have, housing. And then there's permanent relocation. Right somewhere. These become difficult to enforce. On appeal, we've seen uh, decisions that simply state this. Uh, it's, it's a fact of law. It's well intended. And it really comes about by a negotiation between the landlord and the tenant. In my opinion, a hearing officer should make a decision based on uh, customary costs. But we've seen open-ended decisions where the hearing officer said, bear the cost. So, this is difficult. It's typically a negotiation. Uh, I've seen this happen with um, temporary relocation without moving costs, where per diem is desired. And um, we have to refine that. I don't think we can refine it here to today or when we do the final review here. It's one of those functions of law that uh, it's between the two parties, and we step in where we can. That was my question yeah. earlier yeah. about the per diem payment. How landlord and tenant may mutually agree, you know, but who's well? That, there are references there to things. I'm going to defer to other staff on part of the answer there. My answer is based on what I've seen, where I've seen it unreferenced. Did, do you have any experience? From, in it? The, from the cost recovery side, when I when we talk to them, they're usually uh, coming a negotiation, and in fact, some tenants will say just put a guard on my stuff, I'm going to move in with my mom for a week. 
you know. Right. So it depends on the individual circumstances of each tenant uh, with the landlord as to how they're going to handle it. So they, the other remedies could, we can get kind of creative at the staff level, right? When they come in and say, well, usually well, the creation or the creativity is on the part of the tenant and landlord as to how they want to do it. And then they just uh, accept the THP plan or whatever they come to the agreement. And then if there's unhappiness, it goes through an appeal process. So, so until something's resolved. There may be some legislative. Do you have any uh, was there, experience with this? Is there not a, um, a safeguard against uh, if the work goes longer than is... Um, right. That's um, for the permanent relocation. So if the work goes longer than originally yes. proposed, you can request, the tenant can request permanent loca right. re relocation. So that's one safeguard if the work doesn't go as... What happens? Yeah, because, sorry. Uh, the purpose of the regulations that you are developing and approving in here is to make the policies that developed and outlined in the ordinance practical and uh, in a way that is uh, convenient and easy to understand. So within the parameters of the ordinance requirements, you can develop the detail and other requirements uh, that make it easy and you deem necessary or fair uh, to have in place in support of the tenants or at the same time uh, with consideration of uh, work to be done uh, as quickly as possible. That is within the purview of the regulation that you develop. If you look at the, uh, the uh, existing regulation and you see deficiencies, uh, that authority is given to you uh, to provide more detailed information uh, to address different situations. As long as it is within the parameter of the ordinance, which ordinance is usually written very in a general aspect of the work. Just an additional thought is, and to back up what Dan was saying earlier, our staff uses the regulation as a manual and we give it to um, you know, constituents as this is exactly what we follow when we reviewed your case. Right. You follow this when you put the application together, this is how we're going to review it. So it needs to be very basic and understandable for both of us, for both parties, the staff and for the uh, constituent. Right, but doesn't that, being uh, basic and understandable doesn't uh, preclude, right. exclude specificity. Right. 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 right, so you also, because there's just so many places where mm -hmm. stuff can happen that is, uh, it could be damaging to the landlord or damaging to the tenant. And that's, I think, our unspoken responsibility is to a kind of citizen advisory, essentially, right? Where, where we feel it's our job to help protect the public. So the, there's just these places where stuff can happen, like the combination of renovations that are not seismic with the seismic and the gives this landlord, for example, an opportunity to say, well, the city said I have to do it. We only have this much time. And that, you know, so there's just these kinds of messy, muddy spaces that um, are a concern. If we find authority for you to stipulate things like that, we would, we would do so. So we'll, we'll look at it. Like, with respect to this, it, is there a reference? You know, is there a standard, like, you have Dodge Construction Index for construction activities or other construction indexes, or you have income models for other issues like the cost of an appeal or things like that. I can't think of anything for moving expenses other than making a reasonable argument. Mm -hmm. And I don't see how my THP staff could, let's say, enforce this, other than say, you have to pay and then that introduces the concept of, well, how many appeals are necessary. Right. Right. In most other laws, there are appeals at any point, and they're called an error or abuse of discretion. You erred or abused your, your discretion in doing that, or in making that decision. This seems rather finite, with you have an appeal at the THP point, or whatever point it is. So when, so. The, um, and this is getting off of this, going to something else. Yeah. Uh, uh, so at the THP level, so they bring the THP to you, and the landlord doesn't like the result, and they appeal to the hearing officer. Their appeal is denied, which means 
what like do they have to do that okay. yes THP or can they go back to their own drawing board and start the process well we have something going through right now the we, parking issue we have we've had two uh, odd ones but specific to your question um, yes that's their THP what, what, what was presented if they present again and and we agree then they can have it again these nuances will handle at the staff level if and I'm and, and yeah. as a as a commissioner I'm just asking as a member of the public right at that point like I'm not saying that there's anything that we have authority over oh, to look at or anything. right I'm just it occurs to me while we're discussing it that hey what if that happened and I'm throwing the question out that's the only Certainly, that's, yeah, right. yeah. It's it's a it's a discussion again. If if they if they're in discussion with staff, THP staff, THP staff says this is your THP, and um, you need this condition. For example, if we review it and say you have to relocate the tenants, and you say no, I don't. But we say no, we've seen the scope of work. You must relocate the tenants. Then, the ten the owner appeals it, says I don't want to relocate the tenants. And then we testify at the hearing. We have staff who testifies at the hearing. And we say, uh, we're requiring relocation of the tenants for the following reasons, A, B, C, D. And then if the hearing examiner decides in our favor, and the owner doesn't come forward with a new plan that addresses the issues and concerns, they're stuck with that plan. They can come up with a new plan. They might change their construction sequence, for example, and not require some extreme activity. Mm -hmm. but this whole thing of THP is a, it's a negotiation where you discover and you make findings. It's um, it's interesting work. It's 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 really a tenant safety law. You have OSHA for the construction workers, and we're extending construction safety into the household now. Mm -hmm. So it's it's difficult. It could be an ongoing process. It could be, yeah. And the work may not start right away because of that until this negotiation is resolved. Okay, this is just me trying to get yeah. my own likely, head around what's going on. More likely scenario is that they come with a limited scope of work and then no relocation is required, it's approved, it goes to starting work. While they start the construction, they come up with other work that needs to be done. They touch the uh, paint and now they need. Uh, lead removal, other hazardous material removal, extensive uh, scope than it used to be, then they have to modify the THP and provide relocation if it's needed and any other uh, requirement based on the new scope. This is w what we see more often. We have that and we testify and work goes on. And so when that scope of work is um, revised and the THP is revised, it goes back to the general manager or it comes back to, how does it, how does that happen? Uh, modifying a THP, it's like a new THP, so uh, those requirements can be subject to appeal if tenants don't agree with it. It's uh, like starting from the beginning. It can enter into a cycle, yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's really um, complicated and critical work you guys do. I just want to say, really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, um, so we'll expect to hear from you all with a new version of this. Did you want to ask any more? No. You um, should. Um, so we'll expect something, I guess, in our email. Uh, Yes. At some point, at and some then point. we'll reconvene, and then we'll uh, hopefully have something that works for everybody. Yes. Okay, that would be fantastic. So before we um, finish up, I just want to double check, it, since we're on item number two, that there's no public comment on item number two. There's no public comment. Thank you. Thank we you. received no cards. Awesome. Okay, so... Um, the meeting is adjourned at 155. That was